It's going to be to have, interesting for us to have okay. other perspectives sure. on this election. And uh, with Mr. Akita, he's going to give us his view of how Asia is seeing this, this uh, election coming up and what it means for, for Asian countries and also maybe allude also to Taiwanese elections. Okay, thank you very much for having me. <coughs> uh, since I'm from uh, one of the uh, most dangerous geostrategic locations, uh, surrounded by Russia, North Korea, and China, and Japan is just next to uh, Taiwan Strait and Korean Peninsula, and Russia has been occupying uh, Japanese territory for about uh, 70 years. So please allow me to be a, a bit, allow me to present a bit pessimistic view. In that context, I'd like to make uh, uh, three points. One is uh, about the prospect of U.S. presidential election. I don't go, go into a detail because, you know, he... Yeah, and yeah, Jacques gave he, us a lot yes. of details. Then, secondly, uh, its implication, U.S. presidential election implication for Asia or for U.S. allies and partners. And then, thirdly, uh, about the Taiwan presidential election next January. The first prospect of U.S. presidential election. I traveled to the uh, southern part of the U.S. last month, like uh, Georgia, to meet many Mr. Trump's supporter, supporters, and I did. And that reminded me that two things. One, they are very, very serious. They are seriously supporting Mr. Trump. But more importantly, uh, many people say that U.S. economic situation is terrible. Though objective economic data says unemployment rate is quite low and the U.S. economy is kind of growing. Mm -hmm. So I asked the uh, political scientists about it. And they say it is by, uh, by partisan bias. So people do not accept objective data anymore. So this means that I think that U.S. election next year is not a topic to analyze based on objective data because people don't buy it, but rather it is de facto a political civil war. Oh. So political, if it is a political civil war, uh, maybe a prospect would be very, very highly polarized, and whether Mr. Biden or Mr. Trump will win, it's gonna further deepen the division of the United States. So that is my first prospect mm -hmm. on the US presidential election. And secondly, uh, second point, implication of US presidential election to the uh, US allies. Whether Mr. Trump will become president or not, I think that uh, U.S. election will further accelerate so-called Plan A dash trend. Plan, plan A, Plan A world, is the world in which U.S. maintain dominant power mm -hmm. and strong leadership, so that U.S. allies or partners could cheap riding on U.S. security umbrella or US, rely on U.S. leadership. That is a plan A world. But the maybe first Trump administration brought world to plan A dash world. So we are now at the plan A dash world. That is, uh, U.S. allies or partner still keep relying on U.S military presence or leadership to some extent, but the, they realize that plan A is not the sustainable anymore. So make more effort to defend itself or to make more security con or military contribution to sustain US military commitment. For example, Japan made a decision to launch biggest military buildup after World War II, uh, namely uh, double its defense budget within five years. And also Japan reached out to, uh, reaching out to Australia, UK, South Korea, France, to enhance security cooperation to support or complement US military presence. 
in, in, the, in, in, in the Pacific. So I think that a U.S. presidential election will be highly polarized. And if, of course, it is, if Mr. Trump get elected, the world will further accelerate the shift from plan A to plan A dash. But even if Mr. Biden get elected, people, it will highlight how U.S. will be, uh, U.S. have to change, challenge, uh, face the challenge internally. So I think uh, regardless who will be, uh, get elected, the world will accelerate, uh, it, plan A dash trend. But for the country, who can, but some of the country, maybe plan A dash, that is to sustain U.S. military commitment or leadership, will even, maybe for some country, it will not be possible. Maybe Middle East, the U.S. is reducing footprint. So for that country, next year will be the beginning of the real plan B world. So my point is that shift from plan A to plan A dash or plan B world. So that is the second point. And third and last point is about the Taiwan presidential election uh, next January. I think that whether ruling parties candidate or opposition parties candidate win, there will be a common ground. That is a status quo, maintenance of status quo. Oh, yeah. Uh, according to a public poll, majority of Taiwan people really wants to maintain status quo. So if ruling party candidate win, maybe they try to, he will try to keep a distance from mainland China, but will not call for independence. <laughs> if opposition party leader will win the, pre win the presidency, maybe he will try to embrace more dialogue with China but will not embrace China's economic or political sphere of influence to the extent to change the status quo. So that is a prediction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's interesting because Isabel said these elections are not really going to count because it's not going to change much uh, afterwards because what matters is what's going to happen on the battlefield in Ukraine and in uh, Israel. And you're saying that whatever the elections are going to bring about in the States, definitely we're going to see a, a, an importance lessening for the United States so, so as, as the big ally.